Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah. We are going to go to chapter 9 and verse 1. All right. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Now, if you don't know it, Zebulun and Naphtali are two tribes of Israel. Verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Ah, John eight twelve, right? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Hmm, where have we heard that before? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Verse 3. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not, and not increased the joy. They joy, uh, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Quick note here. You know, I've had a lot of people say, well, you know, it doesn't matter what Bible version you use. They all have the same message. Well, the King James says, Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. Some of the other Bible versions say, For thou hast multiplied the, nations, the nation and increased the joy. I mean, one word means the total opposite. So, is the total opposite the same? Uh, I don't think so. What version you use does make a difference. Verse 4. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Now just remember, the Bible speaks about the... Uh, in the end times, that the earth is going to be burned up. Verse 6, listen carefully, Messianic prophecy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So he's called the mighty God. You know, I suggest you read 1 Timothy 3:16 where it says God was manifested God was manifest in the flesh. So there are so many that'll try to deny that. What can I tell you? If Christ is not God manifest in the flesh, how can he forgive sin? Verse 8. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stone, the sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the 
adversaries of reason against them and join his enemies together. Now reason, or resin, R-E-Z-I-N, was the king of Syria. Verse 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. The Lord's hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, the ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they are led of them, are destroyed. I find it interesting that the uh, says that the and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. You know, I don't mean to be crude, but here's a good analogy I once heard and got a laugh at. If you pick up an animal's tail. And you look under the tail, what do you see? And what comes out of there? Well, guess what? That's the prophet that teaches lies. He is the tail. Verse 16, For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they are led of them, and they that are led of them are destroyed. You know, people, it's important not to follow those that teach falsehood. All those preachers on TV, the rich ones, yeah, think about that. Verse 17, Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly for all that his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still if you're willing to take the Lord's hand and let him be your guide and leader he can still forgive verse 18 for wickedness burneth as the fire it shall devour the briars and thorns Boy, we hear about briars and thorns a lot in this uh, Isaiah, don't we? For wickedness burneth, burneth as the fire; it shall devour the briars. It shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Though the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire, no man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall be satisfied, and they shall not be satisfied. And they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, who is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All glory and honor to him, them alone, in Jesus' name. Amen.